Now we'll look at another example, but where the current density is actually um, changing with radius. So you've got this wire with radius two centimeters coming straight at us, and the um, current density is flowing, let's say, out of the board in this direction, um, but it's given like this, 0.5 r squared. So what that means is in the middle, there's hardly any current, and then as you get a little bit farther out, there's, mo there's more and more and more current. Um, so it's kind of like there's a whole lot kind of out at the outer skin and then in the middle, as you move in toward the middle, there's like less and less and less until you get to zero in the dead center. Um, so what we want to do is find the total current and magnetic field everywhere. Uh, so let's work on the total current first. Well, we can't just use current per area times area now because the... Um, the current is density is changing um, as you move out, right? So what we can do though is say that a little bit of current would be current per area times a little bit of area, right? So what we want to do is say a tiny bit of current would be current per area times a little bit of area, right? And then basically add all those up to get the grand total current. Um, so the total current I then would just be the, inter the integral of this. So we have to do the integral of J dot DA. Well, so J um, and DA are going to point in the same direction out of the, out of the page at us. We just got to decide how we're going to carve this up. Well, since it's only radially dependent, we might as well carve it up into little rings. You could also have chosen the small area element like this and done it as a, like a double integral, but we don't really need to. We can use this guy, where our dA is uh, 2 pi r dr. So it's like the circumference times the thickness. Right. Well, so then all we have to do to get the total current is multiply j by 2 pi r dr. Um, so let's do it. So J itself is, is 0.5 R squared. So, so the, the 0.5 and the two will, will cancel each other out. So I'm not even gonna bother with them. Um, and so then what we'll have is pi times um, R cubed dr. And what we have to do to get uh, all of it is go from zero to the total radius. Uh, I guess zero to two. Um, and so what's this? R to the fourth over four. Um, so you'll get two to the fourth divided by four uh, times pi. Well, two to the fourth, that's like four squared or four times four, but then you cancel one of the fours. So this will just be four pi. So there's four pi amps in that, um, coming at you out of that wire, right? So next move is we gotta get the magnetic field everywhere. And so we'll start like we did before by getting it um, uh, in, inside the thing and then we'll get outside. So what we want to do is make our little Amperian loop inside. We'll give it an arbitrary radius so we can get the field at any radius that we want within the, within the thing. And so then let's go for it. We'll do, write down Ampere's law, integral b dot dl around a closed loop. Is mu not i enclosed. Um, this side's pretty uh, pretty easy because we've chosen a, a Ampereian loop that always follows the field, so that'll be um, you know basically b times l parallel or b times two pi r again. Um, where the labor usually comes in is is in finding the enclosed current. So we have to figure out how much current is inside there, um, inside of this thing. Well. It's really similar to what we did before. It's just that instead of getting the entire thing, we just want to know how much is inside an arbitrary, um, uh, arbitrary circle, radius r. So instead of going zero to two, we're just going to go zero to r. So it'll be mu naught, and then we can just cheat off the work we did before. This will be zero to r of pi r cubed dr. So we got b times two pi r equals mu naught. Now this is going to integrate up to r to the fourth over four. So this would be mu naught pi r to the fourth divided by four. Looks like the pi's cancel. And um, what else will happen? When we divide this two over, we'll get an eight downstairs and the r exponent will reduce by one. 
you get b is a mu naught r cubed over 8 in the phi hat direction. Right, because it's, it's in the phi hat direction just because it's coming out at us. Um, so there's our magnetic field inside. Right? Um, so this is inside. Outside's incredibly similar, except for we just need the entire, so you'd make your Ampereum loop out here at an arbitrary r outside. Well, we would just need to calculate how much current is inside, but we've already done that. We know that there's four pi amps in there. So if we run Ampere's law outside, again, it's closed loop integral of B dot DL. So this will be outside. Closed loop integral B dot DL is mu naught I enclosed, right? This is still the same, B times two pi R equals mu naught, and we already found that there's four pi amps inside this thing. So mu naught times four pi. So we're actually already pretty much done. The two pi's would cancel, kind of leaving a two here. So you just get the magnetic field being um, two mu naught over R. Um, again, swirling around in the phi hat direction. So it falls off like one over R when you're kind of away from a wire. Um, once you're outside, so it's, it's growing while you're inside because as you move out, it's growing as R cubed because as you move out, you're enclosing more and more and more current. And then once you're out here, you've enclosed it all and you're not, the amount of current you enclose doesn't depend on the radius of that Ampere loop anymore. Um, so there's an example of using uh, Ampere's law with a varying current density.